Hey, welcome back. Time to start another one of these Norton Project videos here. What's this one? Uh, episode 15, I think. Okay, got both those wheels all polished up and painted where the paint goes and that sort of thing. So, uh, anyway, they're ready to rock and roll. I've ordered a couple of tires and tubes and rim tapes and so i don't know when they'll get here let me think this is tuesday probably before the end of the week i'm thinking anyways let's just uh we're going to be doing various things in this little episode i think uh while i'm waiting for those tires to clean up or show up i should say i'm uh i'm going to start working on oh well, maybe i'll start working on those front forks and uh Somewhere in there, there's a set of shocks that I think will clean up, but time will tell. If they won't clean up, I'll just have to buy new ones. Anyway, let's see what happens. I thought I'd get started with the shocks. Here's before. Now, i got to get this one apart before I get too serious with the other one that I've taken apart. There's no point in cleaning these up if the actual shock absorber is gone so uh, like make sure the shaft is in good condition you don't want to see at least not too much in the ro in the way of uh, rust or anything on that shaft and if you do you have to clean it up make sure it's smooth polish it up well grease it so it doesn't hurt the seal <coughs> but once you uh, once you get the spring off of there and you can compress the shock and pull it out now it should compress fairly easily but it should provide you with a, some pretty reasonably stiff resistance when it's coming out. Otherwise, the back of the bike will just bounce up and down. And there's no point in having a shock that, that doesn't work. Now, I have had these before where they were stored in this prone position like this for years. And when I went to test them, you know, they didn't work. There was no resistance, right? But uh, after having them standing upright, for about 15 minutes I tried again and lo and behold the shocks worked so uh, I went ahead and cleaned them up anyway these are pretty simple to get apart uh, I need to adjust that down to make sure it's got the least amount of preload on that uh, on that preload adjustment there and then these two little clips are what holds the spring in place so all you need to do is compress that spring down and when you've got it pushed down, just pull them clips out of the, out of the shock. The ones on the, the one I'm working on right now, they they come out easily and they clean up really well. So I, did, I didn't even paint those. Sometimes I'll spray a little bit of, uh, of chrome paint on them, but I didn't even need to do that. The, uh, the zinc coating on them are still good. So I'll put them back in there. But uh, the springs are a little rusty on the inside. There's a... There's a a little thing called elbow grease that works really well on cleaning them up. If the outside of the springs, if the chrome is in pretty good condition, they will clean up. There's a couple of little tricks you can do if the inside won't clean up, if it's just too rusty. Uh, sometimes I will spray silver paint down the inside of the spring and then uh, take the outside of the, the spring to the buffer and remove the paint on the outside. If you use silver or black, it works really well on these. It's been, kind of, the neat thing about black is that when the inside of those springs are painted black and the outside like this is chrome, you don't even notice it. So it's a kind of a sneaky little trick you can do to, to uh, you know, when you're cleaning these up, if they're worth cleaning up. Now, I've got to compress that spring and get this get those little keepers off of there like I said the other shock is in good shape and it's worthwhile cleaning up I won't know if this one is until I get it apart so let me get that apart okay that shock with the spring off it now is still good if you push down it will compress quite easily but when you go to pull it out you gotta really pull hard to get up past that uh, the oil that's going past the shuttle valves in there so that shock is still working so I'll get on with this and clean this one up and uh, I'll show you what I get with the two of them when I'm finished and that's <clears throat> that's that shock all cleaned up and ready for paint I'll hang it up over there by the furnace with them with the other one since so they get a 
a primer coat on it and that stuff I can't help myself when there's aluminum around I got to polish it <laughs> anyway um time to get on with cleaning these uh these springs so they'll clean up pretty good I may not even need to paint the inside of those ones when when I get the wire brush in there and have a go at it, we'll see what happens. I'll show you what I got with that too. When I... All right, <clears throat> here's a good before and after sample. This is the spring I was just showing you. This is the one off the other shock that I've cleaned up. You see how nice that is inside? I didn't paint this one. I just scrubbed it with the, the wire brush and it cleaned up pretty darn good. And I have coated the inside of the spring with rust check. That'll keep it from rusting. You can see there's a little, little tiny spot right there. I still gotta do a little bit of work too, but I'm quite sure that uh, this one looked like this one when I started it, so um, I think this one will clean up. I'll show you what happens when I'm done. Okay, there's that second spring all cleaned up. First one cleaned up good too. Inside looks good. I'm not going to bother painting the inside. I'll just spray a little rust check in there like I did the first one to prevent rust. Uh, I know some of you people are going to say, oh, those things are going to rust all the hell as soon as, you know, as soon as they see a little bit of weather. But this ain't my first rodeo. Like I say, if you protect the inside with something like rust check or, or paint, it won't rust. And then, of course, you just keep up with the rest of it with wax and polish like you normally would. And, these ought to last just as long as a brand new set of shocks would. Now, let me get the shock bodies out, put the springs back on, we'll see what they look like when I'm done. I just wanted to show you a little trick that I that I do sometimes. Um, if you're not one of those big muscly guys who can actually press down on that spring enough to, uh, to get those clips out of there, here's a little trick I use, you just take a wrench Slide it in there, up against that buffer, and then all you gotta do is push down on it, and you can take the clips out like that, put it back in. Simple, too easy. So, just grab that. Uh, camera off the tripod here and look at there I even set them on some clean shop towels <laughs> all right you're good to go cleaned up real nice no reason why them shocks can't stay in service for a good many years after this anytime you do this uh, when you do get them on the bike just keep an eye for oil running down out of the seal if the oil's running out of the seal well you need new shocks, but uh, you know, for now, that's it. I hope you liked this little video. Uh, if you did, you can click like and subscribe, and uh, even share it with your buddies if you want to. Uh, keep uh, keep an eye on the channel. There'll be more stuff coming up. I'll probably start the forks next. I'm not really sure, but uh, I have to order in some parts for them as well. So maybe I'll do something else in the meantime, or maybe I'll take them apart, just order the parts and wait for them. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'll keep you posted.